Welcome to the video outhouse with 3% less splinters. Cool. Attention, attention. Is If ever, ever a week there was, this is the week there was because we can review July 8th, 2010. Hey folks, how you doing? Comic Book Man here. Welcome to my video outhouse. It's time once again for a week in review, and this is the it's week in review for July the 8th, 2010. This is your companion piece. One second, chair. This is your companion piece to Ship Shape for this same week. In Ship Shape, we look at the week that's coming, and in, in Week in Review, we look at the week that just came. And joining me today... It's JR, but I'm a confused JR because this isn't media news comic book, man. I'm no, a it's not. Right now. No, it's not. This is Week in Review, where we talk about comics. We will talk a little bit about media. We'll talk about a little bit of everything that, can't, that happened this week. That was, Bogoyevich? as I said, no, not that, oh. not that, not that. Stuff that relates to this, okay, which was, like I said, the 8th, the shipping for the 8th of July. Uh, the big story up this week, big. Uh, big story up this week was the release of, comic book-wise, shipping-wise, was the release of this Neil Adams Batman. Yeah. He writes and draws this Batman Odyssey. It's a 9, 9? 12. 12, oh my goodness. 12-issue <laughs> miniseries featuring Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, and I you hear, right. I, I hear that, that this is been widely widely heralded as being the return of a great master well i'm gonna get this right out of the way right now yes sir. okay i haven't i haven't read this no because i'm a trade paperback person ladies yeah, and gentlemen he's a trade paperback. when this gets in a year's time when this gets put into a book i'll be buying it from comic book man and i'll let you know then what it's like but I, i'll tell you this much see you in a year <laughs> it'll be fresh uh, looking at the artwork, man, I miss Neil Adams. That artwork is beauteous. And I grew up with Neil sucks. Adams, and uh, I have a nostalgic soft, soft spot for Mr. Adams. Now, from what I understand, uh, he's known for his artwork. He's not known for his great writing, comic no. book man. No. Why Neil Adams and decided this proves to... It. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I, where was Denny O'Neill? He's writing another Batman comic. Why Batman's, he... Denny O'Neill's doing a, doing a Batman fill-in. Uh, I, I believe it's this month. This would have been a uh, perfect come out already, I'm combination sure. uh, of, for Adams and, and O'Neill to do this. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all learned that uh, Neil Adams' writing was not the best when he did... Uh, Dead Man. Dead Man. Dead Man. Way back when in Strange Adventures. <sighs> uh, okay, I read this, and the art is beautiful in it. You can't. I, I'm not going to knock the art. You can't knock the art. It's Neil Adams. He's, he's, he may not be at the top of his game, but he's damn close to it in this as far as I'm concerned. The writing is very clunky in this book. Uh, and he's writing Batman, he's writing Neil Adams' Batman, which is not to say he's writing Batman. Uh, both, for some reason, Batman and Robin in this, in this thing are card-carrying members of the NRA, which I don't quite understand, because Batman has an aversion to guns, and, and Robin doesn't seem to have a problem with guns either You think Mr. In this thing. Mr. Adams has some <laughs> left leanings? Well, uh, right leanings. I'm sorry, right, right leanings? Right leanings. Uh, possibly, possibly, possibly. You know, when I look at stuff like this, you know, I, I, I look at it and I shake my head and I go, what? I'm shaking my head. <laughs> Maybe it's going to come back to Well, yeah, maybe this too. plays a part later yeah. on in the story. I guess maybe we're, this is one of 12. 12 issues. It's 12 yes, issues. You don't know where it's going to go. Maybe you'll learn about his aversion to guns. But uh, okay. hopefully the writing improves. Uh, also out this week was Marvel Man Family Finest. This is Marvel's first introduction to Marvel Man in the Marvel Universe. If you have no idea who Marvel Man is, pick this up. You'll get a real good primer on it. Unfortunately... This is Marvel Man in black and white from the 50s, which is where he was from originally. Which is yeah. where he was from originally. And I think a lot of people are going to turn their nose up at this. It's it's a 3.99 book, and it's in glorious black and white, which the originals were not. This is in glorious black and white, though. And this is a primer, if ever there was a primer. Yeah, this sort of bides your time until you hit the Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman stuff later yeah. on in the run, which is what everybody's basically waiting on, I think. But you've got to start somewhere, and with this character, you kind of need to start... At the beginning. Well, uh, the folks who uh, the folks who worked on this book originally, and um, uh, I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember his name here. Uh, the guy who wrote this. Oh, help me out here. Help me out here. I'm blanking help me out here. Uh, 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 oh, Mickey Angelo. Mickey Angelo. Mickey Angelo. Comic book man is not getting any younger. Mickey Angelo. Uh, he originally wrote this character in the '50s. Yes, it's a ripoff of Captain Marvel. Yes, CC uh, Beck's Captain Marvel. It's a ripoff of. But it was in England, and that's what it was supposed to be at the time. Because for some reason they couldn't get Captain Marvel over there, so they did this, and Mar nobody was going to sue across the ocean over this, so they got away with this for a long time. Uh, and then the character went away until Neil Gaiman, brought, not Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore, Moore, brought him back in. Uh, it wasn't 2000. It was Eagle. Eagle. Eagle, Eagle. Comics. Yes. Eagle Comics. So that came out this week. Also out this week is X Women. X1, which is Milo Manera and Chris Claremont. What should you know about this? This is just like the Neil Adams book. Beautiful, beautiful art. 
with a Chris Claremont story. And it, there you go. It, all it is, it's, it's like catalog <laughs> snapshots to lingerie me. Models. Yeah, it's long, exactly lingerie models. models. It's not even artwork to me. It, it's just, That's Monera. That's what he does. <laughs> yes, but uh, it doesn't even seem to fit with the action. It's just a lot of women posing. And, and the, the story is, is, is about as brainless as you can get from Chris Claremont. It, it's more grinding, miserable X-Men stuff that you've read, you know, a million times in the last 30 years. But the art is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> also this week was Scarlet, Brian Bendis and uh, Alex Maleev's new book, monthly series. Uh, it's all about a woman who's been pushed too far, pushed to the edge, pushed to the brink. She has a miserable life. And I read this thing, and this, I, I'm sure that Dan Sweet's going to review it. When and does, and we'll probably have something to talk about because I thought this was really stupid. Really, I thought this book really. Was really See, I, I really was reading stupid. the online reviews for this thing at several sites, and they all sort of bent over backwards, saying how wonderful it was. Oh, you know, if you if you like a lot of angst, and this is you know, they try to make it as feminist angst, and it's not. It's not. It's just it's just more more teen. Nobody understands me. I hate the world. Facebook bullshit. Did Ben just kind of go down the same road with Alias a few years back? He sort of, kind of, but he actually, he, and, th and this this might turn into that. This might turn into that. But with this issue, it ain't there. It ain't there with Alias because Alias was much was much more complex. The character had, had many more layers than than what this character is. She just pissed off at the world, and you know she she hates the world because she hasn't been treated right. Well, Welcome to the real world, or, hon. Origins are almost always thankless. And though, again, works good. And again, it is the first issue. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, a couple of cover a couple other things that happened this week. Uh, DC Vertigo, the walls have come down this week, officially, with the announcement that in action number 894, death from the Sandman, Sandman Endless Death is going to be showing up to have a little talk with Lex Luthor who's going to be at Death's Door. JR don't like it. JR don't like it. Comic Book Man don't like it. I think this this is taking those huge walls, those San Quentin-sized walls that have been up between the two universes, tearing them down. This is Jim Lee and, uh, and Dan DiDito's idea to do this because they want to intermix the two companies and make it one big flowing. I think it stinks on ice, comic book man. And I know that Neil Gaiman's been asked about uh, what he thinks about it and he said he talked to Jim Lee and Dan DiDio. They told him his idea, their idea, so what they want to do with death in the book. He said, fine, go with it. It's all right. Uh, I still don't like the concept. To me, say what you want about Vertigo. It always yeah. was sort of the stamp of quality for DC, for better yeah. or worse. Uh, you're going to tear those walls down and have uh, John Constantine and Flash sharing a cigarette in England somewhere? Mm -hmm. it sounds dumb to me. I can't wait till Constantine shows up with the Justice League satellite during a, during a life and death <sighs> crisis mission that only his powers it, of observation, deduction, and mysticism could possibly fix. It just muddies the waters, you know, and, and even worse is when you hear things like the Watchmen are going to be integrated into the Yeah, I've heard that too, too, the Watchmen. I mean, uh, you, know. I, you know, Superman and, and Dr. Manhattan fighting next to each other. I don't want to see that. I, don't I really see don't want to see that. I, you know, the, these these concepts were, were pure and good and worked in the one universe. And when you move them over to DC, it's just going to lessen you them. Reduce them. It right. reduce them, and it's going to it's just going to make them common. They're going to turn into the quality characters which DC bought, or the Charlton characters that DC bought, which they own, and they've never been able to figure out what to do with. Right. And this is going to be the same thing. They're going to bring these characters over, right. and you're going to have an initial bump in sales on some issues out of a curiosity factor, and then that will be it. You're turning them into just another group of superheroes. It's everything. Alan yeah. Moore hates about comics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything they're Alan they're Moore kind about of comics. spitting in the face of Alan Moore. Uh, quick, quickly, we want to also mention Chris Columbus is supposedly taking over the Superman franchise, which we talk about in media yes, news. Yes, we do. Go to media news. So we're not going to go real deep in that, but that's a real good. Uh, that's a real good thing. As far as we're concerned, it's not a bad choice. Yeah, it's not a bad choice mm -hmm. if that's the actual choice. And the last thing I want to talk about is M Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender. Yes, which, Avatar. Which, what? That's James Cameron. No, Avatar, no. The, Avatar: The Last Airbender. That is correct. So this movie came out to almost universally bad reviews. Last time I checked at RottenTomatoes.com, it was sitting at 4% positive reviews. 4%. And, and you know what the filmmakers did to counteract this? They advertised the hell out of it in its second week, and guess what? It's making money. It's making a ton of money. It's making money, despite the critical <laughs> lambasting that it's getting. Uh, the first weekend was a surprise. Actually, the industry was very surprised at how well it did the first week. Yeah. It's holding up decent in the second week. It looks like it's going to be Shyamalan's third most successful film after Six Sense and Signs. That's amazing considering amazing. how badly it's being covered it in the press. It and really Shyamalan's is. already talking sequel. Versus the budget. How, yeah. how much more is, did it have to cost them than did it? Yeah, how much did it, this thing cost a bundle too? You know, with everything that they've said about that's bad about this film, the fact that they cast Anglos in in in, in uh, Asian in Asian roles, the fact that it, it it's lackluster in the <laughs> script department. Uh, the fact that the effects aren't all that great the either. They're the okay, but they're dark sucks. for some reason. Yeah, the, the 3D sucks. I mean, and 
And this is going to be his third most successful film of all time. Yeah, go figure. Go figure. Go figure. Go figure. Put Shyamalan kind of back up in the level again. We, we all thought he was going to be relegated to television after this, but nope. Yeah. We're getting more Shyamalan. So that's it. We're done. We're finished. That's the Week in Review. Uh, stop off at the store's website, though, to check out all of the media news and the comic book news that Bo sends me and all of this man's reviews. Mine. And where's that at? Sarah knows. Sarah knows. www.myalternatevalue.com Can I have my iPod back now? So stop off at the store's website. Check out everything that he posts up and Bo posts up and I post up. And until next time, this is Comic Man. And it's JR. Saying, see you next time. Bye! The hero of the month this month at Alternate Reality is the Star Spangled Avenger himself, Captain America. That's right, all my Captain America trades are 25% off all month long. Hardcovers, softcovers, masterworks, essentials, everything that's a Captain America trade paperback is 25% off all month long here at Alternate Reality.